Okay, so um, I'm going to give you a real um, run through, quick run through of the findings, and I'm going to go back here because otherwise I can't do the slides. The young people from d limbo underneath that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm 53. There's no way I'm limboing underneath that. Not after that lunch. <laughs> so, um, as Mark mentioned this morning, creating the task force um, was, was uh, a recommendation of the work that came out from Sir John Timpson's review of the High Street, uh, which was requ requested by Jake Berry in 2018. The then five ministers ago, <laughs> minister with responsibility for, uh, for the high street. And the high street task force, we actually went live in 2019, and, and you've all sort of referenced, you, 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 you all know sort of a little bit, or probably more than a little bit about what we've been doing. Um, so that's, that's really good. Uh, so I can, I, can whiz through, I can whiz through this because, um, you know, uh, We've been involved with this, this, we've been working, our experts have been working alongside to boost sort of local authority capacity and probably some sort of like capability as, as well. Um, some of you made reference to the uh, placemaking work, workshops that skill, uh, Steve's been running, so building those skills, coordinating national approach, as Mark mentioned, and the work of the board and the PRDG and other, other groups, and the information and data sharing, the research projects we do, and also the website, so um, look, lots, lots of activity, and you know we've been doing sort of fairly well. We think it's been pretty well received, 92% satisfaction so far, uh, which is pretty good because it's a pretty contested area that we're working in. You know, there's a lot of different opinions about what works, what doesn't work, and so on. So we're we're quite proud about that. And um, I think one of the reasons we get you know a good satisfaction rating is that our, our sort of hopefully our products work and they're based on a very solid theoretical and empirical evidence because because of coming from a, a 30 years history of research that me and the team have been doing at Manchester Met uh, over, over some time. And as I said, improving places is a very complicated process. There's no shortage of factors that affect you know, how the success of our places um, and our research has shown that there's over 234 230 factors that influence the success of High Street. And that was before COVID. So we did this research right at the beginning of the task force, or repeated it at the beginning of the task force. So each of those boxes represents a factor. And the size of the box just relates to the number of studies that we found about, about each factor. So there's our friend car parking there. There's been, a, there's been a lot of studies about car parking. More studies about that than the impact on um, you know, the, the length, length of leases, for instance, on, on the sort of health of the high street. But this isn't very interesting to, to you. You don't really, you're not interested in how much research there is on a factor. You want to know how much these things impact the success of your high street. And really importantly, how much influence <coughs> and control do you have over these factors in your local partnerships? So before, before the high street, we'd worked with 10 towns to, to mod, uh, build a, before, before the task force, to build a model which identified um, how much influence these factors had over the success of the high street. And importantly, what could be done about them locally? And that's a scattergram where we just put sort of every, everything, sort of all those 234 factors. So the, more, the further up along this uh, axis at the bottom, the more they have an impact on the success of your town. And then the more uh, this y-axis, the, the higher on this axis, the more influence you have over them. So you can probably guess which bit of the graph that you uh, probably need to be more concerned about. But first of all, let's think about the things that we don't need to be so concerned about. Um, these factors here, they're not particularly important in a town's vitality and viability, but you also can't control them locally. So things like whether a town is labelled as an urban or a rural town is, a, is a, it's sort of a bit irrelevant, really. <laughs> um, it helps us understand the characteristics of, of a town, but it's not a predictor of success. These factors here are more important 
so they do have an impact on the success of your location, like where it's uh, your town, like where it's located. But you sort of have to live with them or work around them because you can't you can't change them. They're important, but you can't do anything about them locally. And so I think half in half of the um, applications I read, uh, out of town and edge of town development had been identified as, an, as a, a, a problem, taking footfall and spend from town. You sort of have to you have to live with live with that now. Can't can't go back and, and sort of change that deci decision. And even in terms of what influence you have locally, you know, I, I'm from Macclesfield, and recently um, Cheshire, uh, my planning authority, no, not that recent, about three or four years ago, turned down an out of town, edge of town uh, retail park development. But it was called in by Secretary of State, and that's now been built. So you know, you can't always influence these things, uh, even at a regional level. So these ones, factors here, these things say it can be changed by local people, but they don't, we don't seem to find much evidence for them having much impact. So we found quite a few studies from the 90s and 2000s uh, about child minding centres. That was anyone that's old enough had kids at the time. I loved high street and shopping centre child minding. I loved any type of ball play, ball play child minding centre or anything that I could spend three pounds on get my children minded for an hour you know that was brilliant but they didn't they didn't seem to have that much that, that much impact and you know beware of jumping on these sort of like solution sort of um, the solution bandwagon you know so you know this will go around the houses sometimes sometimes it is you know this is best, best practice this works well make sure you've got evidence for it first before you try and influence it uh, try and implement it so um, it's these green factors here um, that are important. You know, they have an impact on the success of your high street and you can do something about it, the get on with it factors. And you will be pleased to hear that all, um, you know, all, 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 all the, the sort of solutions uh, that you listed in your applications and most of the challenges as well just fall into those categories. So fixing these and implementing the things that you're suggesting will have an, a positive impact on your high street. So that's that green get on with it quadrant blown up a little bit, uh, a little bit of additional clustering. In fact, I've got a handout, I think, here. Would you mind? Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. So there's 25 um, priorities that are here. And for those of you that have attended Steve's placemaking workshop, you'll know that this forms quite a key component of that, that work. Activity over there comes out as the number one factor. And that's sort of just, when, it, when the shops and services are, are open, are they open at optimal times to meet the need, needs of your catchment? Is there an evening economy? A lot of you have talked about that. Um, so sometimes it's not always a nighttime economy, sometimes it's more of an evening economy that's a Encouraging sort of um, work, office workers, daytime visitors to, to stay a bit longer. So activity and all those factors in black are the ones that we sort of associate with the town's offer, really. The retailers, the businesses, the appearances, the green space. And these purple factors are, are more foundational. And they're lacking, these purple factors, in a lot of the towns. Uh, that we've, we've worked with and studied. Uh, and that these purple factors, these foundational factors, because they're not there, it stops the places adapting. They don't, they don't have that sort of foundation of networks and partnerships between the businesses and the council or the vision um, that the DLUC team talked about earlier. You know, they don't have those, 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 that sort of infrastructure, if you like, uh, to, to help them adapt. So all the priorities on this, on, in these 25 factors, de, de, uh, priorities, sorry, depend on different people. The businesses provide the offer, but it's the local authority that's usually responsible for things like, you know, public realm, recreational space, maybe markets. And it's not so, so simple to sort of like say every one of these has just got one person or one group responsible for, for things. To really make things change happen, people have to work together in teams or partnerships, the council, the businesses, and as we heard earlier, the landlords, the community working together. 
So if we think about that activity, that's you know our, our number one sort of priority. We've been working with Newquay, where they're actually in a situation in Newquay that they have too much activity in the summer. So there's, there's just too many visitors and the town can't cope. So they're trying to flatten the peak of visitor numbers and encourage more people in May and September. So, you know, everyone gets the same, the businesses benefit, but the town can cope with the demand that it's got. So in order to do that, everyone really does have to work together. And in fact, the businesses are in a situation where they're sort of almost demarketing their own services. So doing things like putting the prices up of hotels and so on in August to try and um, encourage people to not visit the town because there's too many people. Now, I know that's not necessarily the situation that everyone's in here, but just wanted to use it as an example of how everyone has to work together in order to... Um, change uh, the dial on these priorities. So much of the work that we do on the High Street Task Force now focuses really on how we can help High Street stakeholders to work together more effectively. And to help to do that, we've identified four overarching strategies that help, help lo local place leaders and specifically partnerships used to, to drive town or high street transformation. So we call these our four R's. And it's a bit like the 25 priorities, really. You know, 25 priorities simplify over 200 factors into something that's hopefully actionable and relevant to people that are making decisions and making their, uh, trying to make the high street better. The four R's is, is very similar. It takes knowledge and, and practice from planning, from urban design, um, from sociology, from marketing, from economics, all sorts of things, and, and puts them into, into just uh, four strategies. And let me explain how these work. Um, they just sort of, uh, it helps uh, partnerships to understand where, where they are really on, on, on some sort of journey. Some locations we've seen aren't transforming just because there's a poor understanding of data, the trends and challenges that actually affect the town. Um, and so if you've got a poor understanding of that data and those challenges, then any visions or plans that come as a, you know, are going are gonna to be flawed. So that's a strategy of repositioning when it's worth investing a bit of time and effort in collecting a bit more bit more data and having a little bit more understanding of what the problems are before you jump into action. And um, we saw that earlier when we were discussing, you know, the, the symptoms that you've all got, sim in, you've got very similar symptoms, but some of the reasons why some of you've got high vacancy versus others, they might be a little bit different. In some places it might be absent landlords, in other places it might be the, the lack of those, you know, they might not be absent, but they might not be able to invest and so on and so forth. So we'll hear more about that definitely from the landlord's um, and, and property owner's perspective um, a little bit later on. Bex has joined us. Uh, so that's, I know, something you're all very keen to hear about. But in other places, the plans are really good. Like there's, there's been that work done, the challenges and trends are understood, the plans are good but everything just sticks at the plan stage. You know, so there's a, there's a, good, there's a good master plan, uh, but that sort of goes out of date after about sort of five years because the world's, world's, moved in, world, world's moved on. So in some places, they, ha they, ha they need to put the effort in reinventing. They need to make some things happen and they have to make them happen now. And if there is an investment forthcoming, then what other type of reinvention can take place? More temporary types of uh, interaction festivals and events and things that, that bring people into the town, not necessarily needing a lot of capital investment. The third one here, a strategy of rebranding. Some places have a really good offer, um, but everyone talks the town down. And actually, this was the case in Altrincham. I think, you know, you did a lot of work on making physical improvements, the businesses were there, but, you know, there was a core group of residents that lived around the town that just constantly taught the town down. So that's where a strategy of rebranding comes in. And by rebranding, we, call, we talk about that as sort of the whole comms piece. It's not just about the press releases. It's not just about the, the, the sort of uh, more traditional marketing effort. I think we heard uh, it from Hannah when she said, you know, the, 
the community, you have community connectors, going out into the community, talking to community and business and explaining what changes are, uh, are, are sort of happening and getting people involved in being part of that change as well. And then finally, sometimes it's the governance that needs restructuring and um, because we just don't have the right people around the table to, to really sort of do any of these other things sen sensibly. There's just too, too little resource and, or what resource there is. It's just representing one perspective. It's not, it's not diverse enough. And finally, very occasionally also that we put under the restructuring heading is when there's large scale spatial uh, physical change that's needed. And I don't mean that just infill development, you know, you, your shopping centre's tired and you, you need to um, regenerate that, that sort of part of town. It, it's things like the town centre being in the wrong, wrong place, or as we were talking with Hull, I think just earlier, you know, the um, connectivity uh, between areas of the, of, of, of the town might be quite a big sort of spatial, physical uh, issue. So that's, that's restructuring. So a real simplified um, approach, and um, I'd be interested, I'd be really interested, but I won't be able to show you the results until afterwards because that was the trouble we were having with the technology. But if you want to just um, take a photo of that slide, and you can fill in the QR, <coughs> you can fill in the survey afterwards. And we'll use that to think about the next sort of support and you know what how how we how we help you as a high street task force. Because I'm really interested from you and your sort of initial thinking around these strategies. You know, if, if you had to prioritize and sort of think, well, you know, first of all, where, where would you start on this journey? You know, because it may be that you've got your partnership and we've heard. Quite a few places, I think, have already got long-standing partnerships. So it's probably not an issue about restru restructuring because the governance is already there. It's like, are you are you confident of the, the data and evidence that you've got? Can, can we, you know, can we use the high street accelerators and support from the task force to, to, to do some of that? Is it more on the reinventing and activation, or the perception side? And I mean, it's absolutely fine. You know, you'll have a look, maybe a to-do list of things that sort of, you know, some of them are here, some of them are there. You, you might have a few things that you're doing. But my advice would be always take, try and take one perspective. Think, well, we're going to look, you know, we've got a little bit of governance work to do, but perceptions is the bigger issue. So we'll look, we'll try and, we'll try and address some of these issues through something that helps our perceptions, you know, because that's our core um, issue that we really need to focus on. It just starts to be a little bit joined up, more joined up to people uh, in terms of where, you know, what, what it is you're trying to do and, 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 and why. So, you know, as a perception position, I'd say. So we want to reach out to a wider group of stakeholders. That's a really good opportunity for us to put maybe a little um, report together of what the partnership's achieved over the last year or so. We're going to get that in front of people, do a little bit of uh, publicity around that. So you're, you're, you're engaging more people to come onto your board, but you're doing it through the, a strategy of sort of rebranding. Re you're thinking very consciously about improving perceptions as well through that activity. So I'll be interested to see how, how you uh, respond to that, and we'll certainly use that in what we do next. Um, this is the summary of the unlocking your place potential uh, diagnosis. And a couple of you have mentioned uh, that you've, you know, you've, you've, you've had these already, probably in different high streets in your local authority area. And um, up until uh, the end of September, task force experts have visited, I think, 132 high streets. So there's, there's been a number of places now that have gone through this UIPP uh, visit using that four hours framework and a very, very structured methodology to collect all sorts of clues from the meetings, from um, secondary data mm. to identify what the main barrier to transformation is. And, and Mark's already mentioned, mentioned it uh, when he was uh, uh, starting the day with us. You know, this problem of poor governance and partnership working. And it's great to hear those partnerships in, you know, at least emerging in 10 places. But, but that's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not like that across the country. So, 
you know, in 45% of the places that we're, vi we're visiting, there, there, is, there is no, you know, there is no par partnership or, you know, it needs some sort of significant uh, input. So they're quite fundamental, those issues. Um, and, and I hope, you know, these findings have been helpful to DLUC in evolving this high street accelerators policy because it helps to put more partnerships in place. And here's some solid evidence for why they're needed. Well, that's gone all over the place, is not it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to... Uh, <laughs> I just... If, uh, I'll, send this, I'll send you a slide with that on, but basically the journey on the high street journey that Jonathan presented earlier, it makes a sort of, it does build in a bit of an assumption that you're going to do a bit of restructuring first with the partnership, then you're going to do the vision, visioning work, repositioning, then you get into delivery, which is reinventing. So my suggestion is think about rebranding all the way through that because everything's an opportunity for you to talk about change that's that's happening and that's sort of maybe in some respects a, a, a bit of a new way of doing things and competing with a car horn or maybe that's <laughs> my time's up <laughs> um, but as Jonathan said you know if you, you know don't don't that that journey was just il illustrative it, if you've got an effective functioning partnership then you know you just need to be build, building on that and going going and starting your effort into work where it's best placed now, which might be collecting a bit more data, or it might be actually jumping straight into delivery. Okay, so um, that was really the main findings from the task, the High Street Task Force. So hopefully, it gives you some confidence with the work that you're doing because it's all very aligned to what we found out from working with lots of other places. Thank you very much.